Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back to some more bite-sized business advice. And we have my personal favorite type of episode today, and that is a success story or a journey story. I love hearing over the, the number of entrepreneurs that we've interviewed, how everybody got to this very moment. It's always inspiring. It's insightful. It's eye-opening. And it probably scares a lot of people away from entrepreneurship, but outside of that, we're here to dive into a very unique story, a 25-year journey of building a business by accident, is that fair to say, Uh, with a very unique guest. So uh, welcome, Paul, to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I appreciate being on. I'm looking forward to talking. Yeah, I'm excited to, to hear your story and unpack this. So you have not only a unique story, you have a unique niche, if you will, a background. <laughs> um, tell me how this all started uh, 25 years ago. Sure. So when I was in grad school, this is way back in 1996, more than 25 years now, um, you know, I had some free time. And so I started building web pages and really learning how this whole HTML and you know internet worked. And I built two web pages back then. One, I built uh, something about Star Wars toy collecting and, you know, still got the Star Wars hat on and uh, you can see my stuff back there and i've got star wars all over the office i love that but this was in 1996 there were no prequels there was no disney owning star wars it was um just the kids that had collected star wars toys in the 70s and 80s so didn't get a lot of traffic but i also at the time was learning more about uh, native american powwows i had people that were taking me to powwows helping me learn how to make the regalia learn what what it all you know what it all meant and so i built some pages kind of just sharing what i was learning uh, and putting that out there and that took off from the beginning. It was the community. People wanted a way to continue feeling that sense of community and sense of togetherness at the powwow online. And the community really, you know, started to grow from there. And that's kind of where it went. We didn't, you know, I never started, started out to think this would be a business. It was only until we, you know, started having expenses that I had to figure out ways to, uh, um, you know, try to make money at it. And, you know, you said something in the intro there is um, this is, you know, I've been on this journey for a long time and how you define success to me over these 25 years has been, has changed. Right. And while while I was working a full-time job all this time and kind of doing it on the side for us, that the success for us just meant that it gave us freedom to do some traveling, things like that. Now success is different in that I'm able to retire from that job and do this full time. So it's a little bit different. So um, I think how people measure the success over their journey can change. But I think it also um, people need to have realistic expectations. That's one of the things I had to learn along the way. Yeah, I think that's that's where probably gets most people is regardless of where they are on their journey, the expectations versus, you know, how quickly they achieve them. Right that's probably why most people quit because it's not easy. It's not easy to build anything, whether it's a side hustle, a business, uh, a side hustle you want to turn into a business that's full time for you. It's a journey. And that's the whole thing is defining what that journey is for you and appreciating the steps along the journey. So that's, I'm glad you took that approach because uh, most don't. And I want to hear kind of what, what those different steps were. So as you're, you're, the expenses really are what triggered needing to make money, which makes complete sense. Um, so what was that? Like, first of all, how many years ago was that that you started to monetize it? And what did that look like in the early days? I mean, you know, the first probably five, seven years, it was all, um, it wasn't a business, right? It was just, I just paid for stuff personally and somewhere, I mean, somewhere in those first few years, we started having expenses. I I remember girlfriend at the time, wife. Now I remember the conversation we had in college, you know, in grad school, and saying, Hey, I wanted to buy, I think I should buy this domain name, but it's really expensive. It was $75 back then. And it was, that was going to be a big swing for me is that, you know, to spend the $75 to buy, to buy powwows.com. So, you know, in the first few years, it was just, you know, my own money, my own expenses. But as we started to have, you know, needed to get 
bigger servers. And, you know, back then we had forum software. And so that had a cost to it. And if the servers didn't need it, you needed to put that on to run because we had a very active forum, got bigger and bigger. Um, and so that's kind of where we, we had to figure out, you know, whether it was getting sponsorships or um, powwows hiring us to come in and do live streaming. Those are some of the first things we kind of looked at and tried to figure out how we could monetize this. Yeah, that's super cool. And I'm curious, just for context, what can you define what a powwow is? Sure. Powwow is a Native American celebration. They happen for all kinds of reasons. They can be, you know, just an annual tribal gathering, like a homecoming. It can be for celebrations of weddings, birthdays. Um, and a lot of them nowadays are are contest powwows where the dancers and singers compete. So when you go to a powwow in the arena, you're going to see dancing, singing. Uh, a lot of times you'll see it by different categories. So the, the men you know, of a certain style will dance and another group of men will dance, the women will dance and they're competing. Um, then outside of, of that, of course, you're going to have lots of vendors selling crafts and food and all kinds of stuff. So it's really a, a total com cultural immersion experience. Um, but yeah, it's, it's like a festival with all focused on native culture. That's super cool. Do, do people of, of all cultures come to that or is it yes. mostly Native American? Powwows are open to the public on, on powwows.com. We do have a calendar and we list hundreds of them every year. There's one in every state. There's one in almost every Canadian province. So you can find a powwow near you. They are totally open to the public. Some do sell tickets, the bigger ones, but most are free. And you can take your family and have a great time really um, learning about the culture and, and seeing some things that are totally unique. Yeah, that's super cool. I, I've never heard of it, but that's really, that's exciting. Yeah. So you, you've got past the exp covering expenses portion. When did you start to realize like, okay, this is, there's something here. I can potentially turn this into a business or at least I can make a little bit more money doing this. Yeah, you know, it was probably, you know, after that seven, eight year that I knew that this could be, um, I, I did, never thought I could go full time, right? I, I, it was always a dream that like, well, maybe one day we'll have, you know, enough revenue that we can go full time. But in the back of my mind, I was like, you know, it's okay. I'm, I'm working a good job. I've got great flexibility. It's fine. It's enough. You know, we're generating enough that we're covering expenses, gives us a little bit of extra money. We can, you know, take the family on trips, that kind of thing. Um, that, that's really where we were in the, in the, you know, kind of in that eight, nine year mark is when we started figuring that out. And we went for a long time making, you know, okay money, um, enough, enough to stay afloat, right? Um, there were some years we didn't turn a profit in, you know, in those first 10, 15 so years. Um, and, you know, eventually we grew more traffic and, uh, you know, I figured out how to work with some other people. We got into a, an ad network. Those kind of things happened, um, you know, our Google monetization and other things, you know, as you start to grow, those things start adding up. And it was um, eventually, well, thanks to having a state pension uh, and having a part of my salary for the rest of my life now, working, working so many years, I was able to then finally make that transition and, and go full time. Yeah, that's that's awesome. So I love that it's a, you know, it's a very specific thing. It obviously came from a passion of yours. Yeah. What I always wonder when people are in, passion-based businesses is the loss of passion because there's the there's the business aspect to it has that ever happened for you uh, along this journey uh, yeah i mean of course it it happens for seasons you know maybe it'll be a few weeks or a couple of months that you kind of get burned out uh, sometimes at an event there there'll be you know we're sitting there for hours and hours behind a camera there are times you're just like oh my god i'm just tired right um <laughs> But then, you know, you have moments where that re-inspire you for two weeks, two weeks ago, I was at the biggest powwow of the year, Gathering of Nations. And when you're standing there and you see 2000 people dancing together at the same time with the singing, um, that's something you just don't get to see all the time. And that, you know, and that was my 20th year going to Gathering of Nations. It was, that was really emotional that, you know, fed into, you know, really helping recharge some batteries. But then it's also hearing from people, you know, when I get emails from somebody that says, hey, you know, I'm not able to travel as much anymore. I'm getting older. And thank you so much. This weekend, I was able to watch my family dance. Those kind of things really help, you know, because there are long days. You know, this is especially when I was still working full time doing this at night and on weekends and at lunch hours and before work. Those days do get long. Yeah, I mean, it adds up, especially when it's 
yeah. you're passionate about it, but you have other responsibilities, right? Even right. even now, it's it, the the work still adds up and can always take from the passion. But I love that you're able to see through it and you know uh, always come back to. It sounds like why you started the business in the first place. Yeah, I I just love going to them and seeing you know the the connections and just the spirit of the powwow. It it will recharge you no matter who you are. It, it's a great thing. You you walk away with good feelings. Yeah, that's awesome. So I'm also curious because in in this country, Native American culture is something we study in elementary school, middle school, but it's really not talked about and it's not it's not celebrated. Yeah. And quite frankly, I so I, I grew up in New Jersey. I'm in North Carolina now. I, outside of the couple times I've been to uh, Arizona and Southern Utah, like you really don't even see anything about it. And I'm I'm curious the the Midwest too, but I'm curious, like, what is your business like? What kind of an impact has your business had on Native American culture in this country? I mean, I hope we are able to to shine the spotlight. One of our missions is to help elevate the the level of of understanding, the level of appreciation. And I think when we do that, we really help Native artists and Native craftspeople and Native businesses. Um, during the pandemic, for example, we knew a lot of vendors who depend on going to these powwows week in and week out. There were no powwows, so they weren't able to travel. So we started a directory of native owned business. We call it Shop Native. And we're, you know, we're still doing that today. We're trying to add as many businesses into that directory and using our platform to, you know, help, you know, elevate these people up and say, here, here's a really cool business. They're doing this. Maybe, you know, not necessarily all of them are, you know, native products but they're owned by native people. And so we're really trying to help do that. And I think the, the more we can do that, the, the better people are. I hope we're helping. Uh, I saw a quote and I don't remember exactly what it is, but basically Jacques Cousteau said, the, the more you educate people on something and the better the understanding, the more they'll appreciate it. And the more they appreciate it, the more they're protected. So that's really been my mission is if we can help educate people and show them what native culture is and it, that it is still here, and that tribes are still existing and native people are still out there, then I help. I think we can um, really help protect all the issues and, and have a better understanding of what's going on. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a beautiful quote too. And it's so, it's so applicable. Yeah. Um, so before we, I want to look at the future and how you're going to grow this, but I, I'm also curious. I love to hear the different ways people have, have monetized their business and, and the different ways they make money. I think it gives the us as the listener, some inspiration, maybe some new ideas, things we haven't talked about or heard of. So for you and your business, what are the different ways you've monetized your business and those different revenue streams you have? Oh, there's a lot. Um, so to start with, you know, putting ads on the website, we are now in the Mediavine network and there, there's a couple of networks like, um, Raptive, I think is another one. Um, they used to be ad thrive. So it, those networks really help and, and they kind of take care of selling your, your inventory. Uh, we also sell direct ads. So we have some sponsors that buy directly from us that helps. Uh, powwows bring us in and they'll, they'll hire uh, our crew to come in and stream their powwows. That's another one. And then of course we're doing things like, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Um, we've got ads in newsletters and e um, email. Um, we're doing a, affiliate, you know, Amazon associates, you know, all the affiliate stuff too. Um, and then, you know, still, I, I still work a lot of side hustles too and doing, you know, business coaching or other things too, to, to make the ends meet. So there's, there's, there's a lot of ways we, we, anything out there that we can find to, to do it we're I'm on it. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. That's really interesting. I mean, that's why I like to hear it because it's, it's such a unique business that any one of those things that you just said could apply to someone who's listening and, right. They never would have thought about it. So um, I, I appreciate you sharing that. So then looking forward, I am curious because it's it it's a beautiful mission. And what you're doing is is so important, especially for native culture, but also, like you said, for everybody to have more knowledge, more understanding of of our country's history, really. And and who who are we rubbing shoulders with that we may not even know about? And what is their culture like? I think that's the beautiful piece, the beautiful part of, of this country um, and what it was supposed to be founded on, at least. Um, but where are you taking this business? What's your goal over the next three to five years? You know, at, at this point, growth is great and we'll, we'll continue to grow, you know, our platforms on social media and things like that. At this point, I, what I'm concentrating on is making sure that 
the people that are in our newsletter that subscribe to us, the people that follow us on social media, that we deepen those connections. Um, growth will be, uh, you know, a, a byproduct of that. But that's what we're trying to do is, is refine our content. You know, we've done a lot of, um, we published a lot of, of articles. So I've gone through and like over the last few months, I've done a lot of pruning, a lot of um, revamping, making sure that we're putting out the best thing we can, not necessarily producing a whole lot of new content, but really revising the content we have. We're, we're putting a lot of effort into making sure that our calendar and our how we promote powwows across the country, that that is as best we can do. That takes a lot of work um, and a lot of effort, a lot of time put into that. So that's, that's something we'll continue doing. So that that's really our focus right now. Yeah, I think that's everything you were just saying too about building the relationships. Not a lot of businesses do that well. So you you actually have a, a tool for us um, or a download for for the listeners that I'd love for you to talk about. It's at paulgowder.com slash email tools. Um, tell me how you came up with this and, and yeah. who should download it. One of the cores of powwows.com to me in the is community. And I, I think a lot of people miss this in their business, but my email list is really the heart of my community. Now I have, we have over a million followers on Facebook and that is community, but I don't consider that the heart of our community. The heart of our community really is our email subscribers. And I treat them like, you know, they are like they're in a group, like they're in a Facebook group, right? We're having conversation in email. I'm asking questions. I'm sharing with them. I'm talking very direct to them. And so growing my email list has been, over the last five years or so, that has been a major change in how we do business and, and our focus and, and how we connect with them. So the, the email tools, are, that's some of the ways I, I've been able to grow our email list. Um, and th that is a huge, huge benefit when I'm able to actually talk directly to people. It's so incredible. Yeah, that's super powerful. It, and that's, like you said, it's something that most people neglect. They think their email list is just one big sales list that they yeah. spam with stuff. I love that you take the relationship building and community building aspect to that. That's amazing. Yeah. I love it. I, you know, I have a, we have lots of different sequences. And, and so we take people kind of through a, a journey or a series of, of emails. One of them is if you're new to powwows and you don't know what to do and you're kind of, you know, anxious about it. We have a whole email series of what to expect at your first power. And we go through what it means, what the etiquette is, what you can bring, what you don't bring, all that kind of stuff, how to find a powwow near you. And in that, I ask a lot of questions to them. And it is so much fun every day to check my inbox and, you know, see people, they'll respond and, and they're, you know, they're excited and they're looking forward to their, their first powwow. And then a couple weeks later, you may get an email back and said, saying, you know, hey, we went and here's how, what we did and how, here's what we found. A lot of people, pe a lot of times people will send me pictures. Those are so great. I mean, and that's the, that's what email is about, right? It's not about just shouting at your people. Go do that on Twitter. Um, email is really about having those conversations directly. And it, it's so much fun. I, that, I love that part of, of my day. That's so awesome. Yeah. If you're, if you're curious about how Paul does that, go, go check this out. It's on the screen. It's in the show notes. And if you want to find a, a powwow near you, what'd you say it was? Powwows.com? Powwows.com. We got a calendar right there. You can find one. That's awesome. Go check that out. We'll make sure to put that in the show notes as well. Uh, Paul, this has been awesome. Super cool interview. And, and to hear your story, I love to, at the end of these episodes, leave the listeners with a little tiny gift, if you will. And it, you can see behind me, there's a giant upside down question mark. We love questions. And at what if we believe that powerful questions get you powerful answers. So in terms of, it sounds like you are a community building expert uh, or a relationship building expert, really. What would you, what was the, what is the question you would have the listener ask to themselves mm -hmm. so that they can walk away from this episode and think about it for the rest of the day, the rest of the week in terms of building a community and a relationship with their customers. One of the things that's helped me the most, especially like we're talking about email is finding out what your audience, what your listeners, what your readers, what they're really wanting to know and finding the best way to deliver value and deliver content on those questions and those concerns. And once you do that, then you're going to really see things explode. It's not about, you know, always pumping out an SEO article or, you know, making a TikTok that's going to get a 10,000 clicks, right? It's you've got to figure out, even if it doesn't get but 100 views on YouTube or whatever, if it's if it resonates with those 100 people, then it's massive. So figure out what it is, what it, what is they what are they really looking for and deliver that and do it over and over again. And that's where you'll get the value in those relationships. 
Hey, man, that's beautiful. Well, Paul, thank you for being here. This is a fantastic interview. Thank you. For those of you watching, listening, wherever you are, go check out all that Paul provided you in the show notes down below in the description. We'll link to everything. You can go find a powwow near you. You can download the email built list building tools that he has for you. And we want to see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch. So make sure you subscribe. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Thanks for